This is Tom Daly with Deerfield Oral History, and our guest today is Annie Bryant. So Andy, let's start with your full name, and where were you born? Annie Jane Ackerman, and I was born in Walterboro, South Carolina. Okay. What is the uh, early memories that you have about ancestors? Who do you remember uh, the most, and when and where did they live? Okay, so I guess that would be, it would have to be living if I remember them that well. Uh, my great grandmother, um, and when I knew, uh, she was Ellen Reed uh, Johnson uh, Rivers, and she lived in um, Orangeburg, South Carolina with my grandmother and grandfather mm -hmm. when I knew her. Um, but she, uh, and she died when she was um, 90. Uh, and I've, I guess I've heard, numerous stories about her, but she was born, I always thought it was wonderful, she was born in 1856, and um, she uh, took a trip to Europe, uh, apparently, um, when she was about 56, uh, and um, in her 80s, um, a trip to Alaska, and, and, and learned how to drive at 75. Oh my goodness. Uh, if you uh, saw Mrs. Rivers coming, um, she didn't uh, know how to, to back up or anything. She just knew how to turn around. <laughs> um, do you remember your grandparents? Oh, yeah. Uh, what were they like and where did they live? Well, as I said, uh, my great-grandmother, Danny, that was her uh, nickname, mm -hmm. lived with um, my grandmother and granddaddy in um, Orangeburg. And um, granddaddy was a wholesale grocery salesman. A parish young angel, and uh, grandmother was just a homemaker, and uh, I just spent uh, many weeks in the summer with them and just had a, a wonderful time. Somebody uh, uh, the other day asked, uh, uh, what was one of the things you thought about when you thought about your grandmother, and it was um, the smell of fresh baked cookies when I walked in the door. <laughs> and, uh, uh, tell me about your parents. Uh, what did they do for a living? Well, I, my father was a, a pharmacist, mm -hmm. and um, when I was uh, born, he had a, a drugstore in Walterboro, and um, I'm not sure if it was, uh, the, well, I was born in 35, that was the end of the Depression or what, but um, he um, and had a, a partnership, I think, with another guy. It was People's Pharmacy. Um, and, so he uh, gave that up and um, went to, um, uh, he was to Charleston. He was a, a talented, talented um, uh, woodworker and um, a construction, you know, um, a guy who could build anything. And um, so uh, he left, um, we left um, Baltimore and moved um, to Charleston. And he built his drugstore that I can remember playing inside while he was still building it. <laughs> and uh, did your mother have a job outside the home? No. Okay. Yeah, years later, uh, well, when my daddy died, uh, mm -hmm. she did uh, work, uh, went to work for the first time in her life uh, at uh, Belk's. Um, but uh, later on, she, uh, I think when the census was being taken to ask what her occupation was, she said, playgirl. <laughs> Do you remember the building that in which you grew up? Well, and what was it like, if you remember? I can remember um, the first house that Dad had built in um, Baltimore, because I can remember um, falling out the, uh, the front window looking for my birthday present. It was just a large bowl. But um, then we uh, uh, moved to Charleston, and he built our home there, and um, it was. Uh, right next uh, to the drugstore and uh, the Boulevard Pharmacy. And um, so, uh, yeah, I remember that house well. We had uh, three bedrooms and uh, a bath and a uh, living room and um, kitchen. And uh, later on, Daddy uh, built an addition on the back of the kitchen where we ate. And uh, one time he was doing some remodeling 
you know, the only storm we uh, the only snowstorm we ever had, and um, I forgot that he hadn't put any steps on the back door, and I <laughs> walked out and slid down. <laughs> so, um, did you move to other homes? Uh, uh, no. Besides those that you uh, mentioned, we just well, we stayed with uh, my uh, grandparents in Orangeburg, uh, probably for the uh, I was six by then, and. Um, we stayed with uh, them for uh, the first half of the school year. My daddy was completing a uh, house. Mm -hmm. So we lived in Orangeburg for just a short period of time then. Okay. Um, what was the neighborhood like where you lived? Well, we really didn't have a, a, a neighborhood as such. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I had uh, f you know, friends um, through school <coughs> and you know, got together with them, but. We uh, then lived on a, a busy highway, uh, and so there were a, a few, you know, homes behind us and uh, uh, down the road, and so I had a couple of friends, you know, there. Um, but that was uh, kind of the nature of the. Uh, of the okay. Uh, what what schools did have you attended in your lifetime? Uh, well, um, starting off with uh, North Charleston. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, elementary school, um, and then um, uh, then I went to Ashley Hall for a couple of years in Charleston, uh, mainly to uh, take art, and then uh, then I went finished. Uh, but then I was beginning to get interested in boys and wanted to go back to public school, so <laughs> we um, I went back to Ben Tillman um, uh, Elementary School, and then North Charleston High School. And then, like I said, Daddy had a really uh, good business with his pharmacy in um, uh, that area. But I don't think he was a very good businessman. And um, I always heard he extended too much credit. <laughs> so uh, he worked for a short time. Uh, he evidently sold the drugs to him. He worked for a short time on uh, Johns Island or, or Charleston. And then we, um, uh, so kind of during that uh, transition, we moved, moved to Orangeburg again uh, with my grandparents uh, while Daddy was getting settled in uh, Greenwood, mm -hmm. South Carolina. So um, I went to uh, you know, North Charleston High School, then Orangeburg High School, then we moved to Greenwood, and I was uh, 15 then. That was the, I was a sophomore in high school. And uh, what about after high school? Well, uh, <coughs> Daddy died uh, when I was a senior mm -hmm. in high school, mm -hmm. uh, uh, December, uh, what, 52, I guess. And so um, then uh, we were members of the Episcopal Church in um, uh, Greenwood, and someone there generously helped me go to college. I went to Lander College, which is now Lander University mm -hmm. in Greenwood for one year. Okay. And uh, I really didn't feel like uh, we could have, uh, I could afford to go on. And of course, mother, like I say, uh, had been working at Bell's, but uh, my daddy had started, in, uh, before he died, he had started a new <coughs> drugstore in New Ellington, South Carolina. And apparently had sunk all of his savings and everything into it. So we were left with uh, uh, not a very large income. Uh, so um, after that year at Lambda, um, we moved, like I said, to Orangeburg, and I took a, a six-week speed writing course and uh, went to work uh, in applied engineering, which I was just kind of a uh, uh, clerk, I guess, really, mm -hmm. uh, doing a lot of filing, that kind of thing. What did you major in in college? Well, at first year, yeah. <laughs> I really didn't major in anything. I just kind of got through. Uh, but for the next, um, that was 50, uh, 53 and 54 mm -hmm. when I was at Atlanta. So for the next, um, let me see, I'm trying to th think how many years that would be. Uh, I had different jobs. I moved um, 
from Orangeburg uh, to Charleston mm -hmm. again, and uh, lived there and worked um, for uh, Pittsburgh Plate Glass, and um, then I was a new business clerk at um, uh, New York Life, uh, where mother's first cousin was, was manager, and um, I might be getting out a sequence of questions you asked, but That's okay. uh, then um, uh, in 1958, um, I went with two friends to Charlotte. One had a job in, uh, as a teacher, and one didn't. <laughs> so the, um, uh, we, um, uh, Nancy, uh, well, yeah, I can't think of the other, Eileen and uh, Nancy Rivers, who was a distant cousin and, uh, and close friend. We walked, I can remember walking the streets finding a job. I got a really good job at, uh, at Seal Test, and she did uh, at a, another company. And uh, uh, so I worked there um, for a little over four years, I guess. But I had always painted, mm -hmm. and so I was taking some um, art courses at, at night. And, uh, I went to work and I freelanced, so I left. Uh, I left uh, seal test. Uh, a really good job as a secretary to one of the uh, executive vice presidents. But uh, uh, when I uh, left to freelance to make ends meet, I worked for Manpower, and they sent me to a Presbyterian church, Associate Reform Presbyterian Church, and uh, that was 19. Uh, about 1962, and I stayed there until uh, 69. But in the process, uh, in the meantime, I went, um, uh, took a, a course at um, Queens College in art. Then I went back to school, uh, determined to, to be able to finish college at some point. So I went to um, Piedmont, uh, Central Piedmont Community College, and. Uh, by that time, uh, I guess I was almost <laughs> a junior. Uh, I, I would uh, work uh, uh, at the church, and, I would, and um, uh, sometimes I had a, a, a course at uh, during the lunchtime, and I remember having a biology class late at night. Um, so uh, in January 69, I left the church and went to Erskine College. And um, I graduated in 1970. Um, uh, I had a um, scholarship, and one of them was working in the admissions office, and I knew when my um, uh, scores came in that they'd probably kick me out, but <laughs> I stayed. And then um, for the next two years, uh, well, for the next year, after graduation in August 1970, um, I went to um, Erskine Seminary with the idea that I was going on to the Presbyterian School of Christian Education, mm -hmm. which is now um, <coughs> Union Seminary. Uh, it was across the street from them, but they combined them and, um, uh, and graduated from there in uh, 1972. Uh, so for the next... Um, Five years. Well, before I graduated, I was offered the job as a director of Christian education for the denomination of the Social Reform Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, uh, we had to think about, I've forgotten how many, 22,000 members <laughs> and how many churches. That, uh, so um, I actually, uh, I moved back to Charlotte because that's where the the offices of the denominational the offices were, and we, um, and I was there for uh, about six months before the offices were moved to Greenville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, so I was with it um, in that position uh, for five years, and really loved it. But I, and I found that you know the, um, I didn't like. Part was uh, that I had, well, I guess you'd say, <laughs> um, 
uh, caught up in, in, in kind of administrative details. But I really like the time I had when I visited individual churches and worked on a kind of one-to-one -one basis <coughs> with, with uh, families and people. And I began to feel, uh, you know, a call um, to maybe a, a full-time ministry. I, I didn't sh want to show what at that time. But if I can back up a minute, when I was um, between uh, the summer at Erskine uh, Seminary and my year in Richmond with Presley School of Christian Education, I did a, a, a summer as a, a in clinical pastoral education mm -hmm. at Georgia Baptist Hospital. And so that, I, I, you know, uh, was a really good experience. And um, so I left uh, the, uh, my um, job as a director of Christian education uh, and, and s resigned in 1977 and, and um, went to Delaware to, uh, uh, I was able to uh, kind of at the last minute get into a clinical pastoral education program there at, um, and it was at um, uh, the state hospital, which was really I guess kind of between Wilmington and Newcastle, uh, and that really confirmed that that's uh, that I wanted a, uh, you know, uh, an ordained ministry, and uh, so I really left the program a little early um, in June instead of a uh, full year. I'd gone in August uh, to uh, take uh, Hebrew at uh, Canada in Atlanta. <laughs> And then I went back to Erskine Seminary because uh, for my final year, um, the year I had in Richmond, um, you know, the, it was a three-year seminary program um, counted for what uh, you know the um, courses I would need. Uh, so I graduated from Erskine Seminary in um, 1979. Okay. So, boy, that's quite a history. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you had a lot of jobs and moved around. Uh, I did. Yeah. Um, so then, once you were ordained, right, what happened then? Did you, you well, served several churches? Or? No. Um, what I, I, well, by that time, I had joined the Presbyterian Church USA, because mm -hmm. um, they would not, <laughs> ARPs at uh, that time were still don't, um, have women, um, you know, uh, in the ministry uh, or as elders. Uh, so um, I interviewed for some other uh, uh, chaplaincy uh, programs for clinical, uh, clinical pastoral education. Mm -hmm. And I was accepted at uh, the State Hospital in Columbia, South Carolina, and at um, Southern Baptist Hospital in New Orleans. Well, I'd already been in the State Hospital for you know, nine months as a uh, in CPE. So I decided to uh, uh, go to New Orleans. But the summer between um, that uh, program beginning and graduating from seminary, um, uh, I worked for, um, <laughs> now I can't think of that. Um, anyway, I worked that summer in Greenville. Mm -hmm. And I probably come back. That's see. That's aging. <laughs> oh, oh. It happens to all of us. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so um, yeah. And I, uh, my when I lived in Greenville, um, when I moved there in '72, uh, my sister uh, moved, and her daughter, uh, she had divorced her husband, and they um, moved in with me uh, in '73. So, and we had um, built a house together. And when I, so when I went back after um, uh, finishing um, seminary, uh, I lived with her that summer, and, and her husband and daughter. And, um, and the, like I said, uh, New Orleans was a totally new experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, jobs that you've had along the way? Let's see. Um, <clears throat> well, really, I guess uh, those were the ones that I've mentioned. Um, 
engineering firm in um, Orangeburg, and um, uh, then um, the two in Charleston, mm -hmm. uh, ending up with New York Life. Okay. Uh, so I guess, um, and besides, you know, the, uh, the church, which I had a wonderful experience, of course, at the church in um, Charlotte. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, okay, uh, now you mentioned your sister. Do you have any other brothers and sisters? No, I have. Uh, well, uh, the sister that lived with me and in, in, uh, came to live with me, her daughter in uh, Greenville, mm -hmm. uh, she died in 1985 of, uh, of cancer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was really close to um, her daughter. And so, um, and, and still I am. She lives in California now, and I can tell you more about uh, Rivers, is her name. But, um, and then my other sister, um, uh, my sisters were nine and ten years young. Oh, okay. So, uh, B Billy, um, uh, the one that died in 1980, was the one that died in 1985. Mm -hmm. And my other sister's Eva, Eva Claire, and uh, she lives in Tryon now. Uh, she, uh, her husband um, was in the military, was in the army, I think, for 30 years. And uh, so, of course, uh, they were retired, and um, we, uh, and of course, as I, uh, as my sisters got, grew older, we got much closer because they were so young when, you know, um, sure, sure. Uh, so much younger than I was. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember how your family, or if they celebrated holidays, or uh, any special memories about celebrations? Well. Um, because we always, you know, certainly celebrated Christmas, but you know, during the war years, mm -hmm. and I guess for a lot of reasons, we didn't um, get together particularly at, at Christmas. But mm -hmm. um, uh, we always had. Uh, I can remember um, uh, two Christmases, but particularly that uh, seemed to mean a lot to me. One was uh, before my sisters were born, and I can remember mother and, uh, uh, and I were wrapping presents in the blackout <laughs> uh, for Christmas. And then uh, another one, right after my younger sister Eva was born, um, she was premature born in um, uh, uh, September, I mean, I mean uh, December. And uh, so, and she was, uh, mother had just brought her home and um, she had a good friend who was a, a registered nurse and, so she came to kind of help mother take care of her. So I can remember the house being kind of full then, but I was, for some reason I was sick and I don't know why, over Christmas. And I can remember um, mother and daddy giving me um, the book Hans Brinker of the Silver Skates. And uh, I just can remember how it was uh, such a good, warm feeling, mother reading to me mm -hmm. in bed that Christmas. <laughs> and Wonderful then, memory. And of course, um, uh, as a family, uh, we got together for, for reunions which was always really special. Um, in uh, Somerville, uh, my aunt and uncle had, a, uh, well, it was a plantation initially, and then it was a uh, Mativa Gardens. It was open to the public, but by the, uh, I guess, it, it got when it closed, uh, uh, but because of one of the hurricanes, but they had a, just a big house and a big um, oak tree in the front. It seemed like we uh, have all of our, uh, you know, special kind of gatherings underneath that tree. It was my grandmother and granddaddy and um, uh, with my um, granddaddy's uh, sisters, my great aunts and yeah. cousins. So we just had a, a <clears throat> great time. Great time, yeah. Okay, I'm shifting gears a little bit. Uh, what brought you to this place, to Deerfield? Well, we moved to, um, my husband and I moved to uh, North Carolina. <clears throat> about a year after Katrina. Uh, the, uh, everything had just kind of closed up, you know, all, and it was hot as <laughs> all get out. So, uh, and I had spent so much time in the mountains in the uh, summer as a child. Uh, my daddy and I would, uh, uh, that was before my sisters were born, mm -hmm. would come to, to uh, Hendersonville and to Saluda and, um, you know, uh, and uh, all this area. 
and uh, so, and it was much cooler. Not I always this always loved North Carolina, so we started looking for a place uh, to live, and um, we looked in South Carolina. In fact, even around Greenwood, and uh, then um, we had uh, good friends um, who had a, a home here in uh, Hendersonville, uh, as well as uh, Mississippi. And in fact, he'd been director of pastoral care and had married Ray and I, because I met, and told me that part, but I met him at, um, at the hospital in, in New Orleans. So um, uh, they had signed up to come to um, Deerfield and decided uh, later uh, not to, and actually after, after they encouraged us to come and get, get acquainted with Deerfield. So we were living in, uh, we bought a home in, uh, in Hendersonville, uh, and actually in 2006, we moved in 2007, we were there until we moved to Deerfield in 2010. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, so we were always struck by the fact that we seemed to get in so quick. There were so many people waiting now to, to get in. Well, tell me about your husband. Well, I guess you'd say he's the love of my life. And <laughs> we, we used to laugh, so we were looking for each other in all the wrong places. <laughs> He had, um, he was uh, a doctor and um, pathologist and head of the blood bank at Southern Baptist Hospital. Mm -hmm. And I had been there at least two years uh, when, um, uh, and he also was head of the lab school there. And one of his lab technicians says, you know, I think you ought to meet my boss. He says, we're having a, a, a party at the end of the, um, when the lab techs were, were graduating. And says he teaches Sunday school on you <laughs> minister, so <laughs> uh, that's um, how we met. Um, and then several weeks later, the same person says, Dr. Bryant wants to uh, know if you would have lunch with him. <laughs> so we went over to Bull's Corner, which was right next to the to the hospital. And uh, uh, he, she had told me, he said, what he wants uh, is to ask you about the Apostle Paul. Well, needless to say, we didn't <laughs> talk about Paul. <laughs> but uh, he was um, he was a great guy. He, uh, like I said, he had uh, three children uh, at that point, and, uh, which I'm still real close to. Mm -hmm. But uh, he um, was uh, had gone to uh, Ole Miss and then uh, graduated from the uh, University of uh, Tennessee in Memphis and um, had been in uh, uh, sort of general practice to begin with in Mississippi before he uh, uh, moved to, uh, to New Orleans and specialized in pathology and immunohematology. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was very active in uh, uh, the blood bank and um, uh, I think was one of the first ones to kind of stop frozen blood or using frozen, frozen blood. And um, so he, was involved um, uh, across the states with um, pathology as well as um, blood banking. And, um, uh, but we, um, and after we met uh, and, and started uh, dating, in fact, I always thought this was kind of funny. Uh, my, no, well, not, part of it was certainly not funny, but my sister Billy, um, had come to visit me um, in 82, I guess it was, around Christmas time. And um, she started really having a lot of pain with the can She'd had, well, she'd had cancer since, uh, goodness, um, well, when she died for, for tw uh, in 85 for 12 years. Mm -hmm. But she'd been able to manage it pretty well. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was like, uh, well, after, I'm trying to think of the sequence of events, but uh, anyway, um, I was uh, oh, well, I was out of town for uh, a couple of weeks after I started dating Ray, and she was at MD Anderson Hospital, and so he tried to call me, <laughs> uh, couldn't figure out you know what was going on and why we weren't able to get together, but as, as we did and. 
So, uh, but after we uh, started uh, dating, he had a, a, a pecan farm and uh, across the lake, across uh, uh, Lake Pontchartrain, and uh, near Covington. So. Uh, we spent a lot of time going over there, bush hogging and doing that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, did you all have children? No. No? Uh, like I said, by that time, I was, I didn't get married till I was 49. Oh, <laughs> is that right? And he had been married. Okay. So he had, he had two uh, girls and a, uh, a he, son. She, he already had the children. Right, the children. yeah. So okay. they have, they have been wonderful. One of them lives here, uh, and she moved here seven years ago, so. We get together and talk every morning. <clears throat> get together once a week, and then a, a, she's here, dear. Yeah, no, uh, she's oh in Asheville. She's in Asheville. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, okay. Uh, his, so uh, going back a little bit, what were you like as a child? Now you've mentioned your painting. You were interested in painting, but what were you like? Um, I guess I was a tomboy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I like. I can remember Bill. Uh, well, really, I started to say um, I like dolls a little bit, but I can remember inside my daddy's, when he was building that drugstore, um, that I took his scraps and things and built a house inside. <laughs> and so, and of course, we, um, every summer, we came to the mountains and I'd go you know, fishing with him and we went to um, uh, see cowboy movies. I did a, a lot of reading. Um, mm -hmm. Had wonderful times in the summer with my friends in uh, Walterboro, uh, one uh, with whom I went to Charlotte in, in 58, um, uh, Nancy and uh, Bunny Rose. So, um, you know, uh, I can remember a, a couple of scars I have <laughs> going down the uh, uh, a slide in the swimming pool and hit Nancy's head. <laughs> and I think another time on Halloween, running and turning, breaking my nose, I couldn't see what we were doing. <laughs> my goodness. Um, did any of your family serve in the military? Uh, no, just uh, I had an um, uncle, my first cousin, um, so, uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. my mother's sister's husband, who was in the army, and he, uh, which was. Uh, he wrote to me when he was on me, so that was kind of neat. But Daddy, um, by that time, he was, uh, mother was 19 and he was 33 when they got married. So, and he was, I guess, had a, a valuable occupation. So, um, yeah. yeah. Um, what music do you like? And has music had any kind of an impact in your life? Uh, not really. Um, when I was growing up, you know, I could, uh, I liked all the popular songs. Um, of the, um, I guess that would be the, what, the, uh, the 50s and the, uh, the 60s. Yeah. Um, in recent years, um, I've just enjoyed, uh, you know, classical music. And um, uh, Ray and I used to listen um, to, you know, things like, uh, well, we had a a bows, I guess, <laughs> yeah. and um, had some good records with, um, you know, uh, Vivaldi, Chopin, mm -hmm. and people like mm -hmm. that. Aaron Copeland is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, now, I know that art is important to you. Tell me about your art and what you've done. Well, the first uh, time, the claim is that uh, my papa, uh, which I haven't said much about him, but daddy's Daddy mm -hmm. um, gave me um, a, a stuffed rabbit, and the first thing I did was, when I was about five, so tried to draw it. <laughs> and uh, uh, but uh, then I can remember in the second grade um, taking uh, an art class where we were taught how to draw Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but I, uh, I always, you know, liked to, uh, to sketch and draw. In fact, uh, my great grandmother with whom I was really close, um, Nanny. Uh, she, I thought, was a very good artist. She didn't, she painted mostly China, which I have a copy of, of one of her pieces over there. But she uh, recognized that I had, she thought, some talent. And I can remember her sending me a card that I've lost. In the meantime, 
it was some kind of etching on it or something like that. And uh, she uh, said, I think this is a, a technique that you might like to use. But, um, and I uh, got a lot of these how-to books, how to draw horses, how to draw people. But um, in the fifth and sixth grade, mother and daddy sent me to uh, Ashley Hall, which was a private girls school mm -hmm. in Charleston. And um, I really feel like that was a very formative time because for some reason I was able to stay in the uh, studio more than I was able to stay in the, the classroom, the <laughs> regular classroom. So, um, uh, you know, I think that, uh, I think her name was Alice May Smith and she was a, a well-known watercolorist in Charleston and taught me. And then later, um, <coughs> I really had no particularly formal art training, um, but I always painted. And when I, as I said, I left, um, Seal tests and seal tests um, to freelance as an artist, and um, I got different opportunities to do murals for um, uh, the uh, largest construction company there and the homes that they were um, uh, trying to sell and promote. Uh, like uh, one time, I uh, did a, a geisha girl and something. Uh, some other things that kind of reflected uh, the Japanese culture and a home that they were trying to sell like that. So, uh, but really to make ends meet, <laughs> uh, I worked for Manpower. Yeah. And uh, they sent me to the uh, Glenwood uh, ARP church. And uh, that was, of course, like I said, wonderful experience. And uh, the pastors, they really, um, this got me involved in all kinds of things, um, in Christian education and, um, you know, Bible school and, and that. And I did paintings, and one of the first paintings I did there was uh, a mural in uh, the children's, um, uh, the, um, uh, well, it was a, a playroom, I guess. And, um, but uh, while I was there, uh, this, uh, I'm trying to think, remember who she was now, but I, I can't remember her name, but uh, asked me if um, I was interested in doing uh, a mural at um, Charlotte Memorial Hospital. I think she's, I, I was a member of the Char uh, Charlotte Art Guild and she'd seen some, I think some of my paintings. So um, for, uh, over a year, in about 19, but I was working for the church, and this would be um, uh, at night, mostly in the weekends. Uh, I painted uh, the three wings of um, in, at Charlotte Memorial Hospital. Um, uh, well, I say three wings, but it's three wings of, of the um, the pediatric uh, floor, mm -hmm. and. Um, then, and I did a lot of promotional work for the denomination, um, for the different things that were coming up. And, um, but still, and, and I had, uh, at Erskine College, um, I had taken uh, one semester of art. Uh, and, and when I was in seminary um, that first year, uh, I um, taught um, art um, I was on the faculty of the college uh, teaching um, art to um, elementary school. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, it was all women. So I said it was a uh, co ed uh, college, but uh, who were going to be teaching um, uh, 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 in elementary school. So, uh, well, I know, I know it's been tremendously important to you, and of course, I've uh, seen your work. I'm going to change gears a little bit um, and ask you, um, how has the world changed since you were young? Since I was? Young. Oh, <laughs> a whole lot. Um, and I've talked about that with friends many times, you know. When I'd visit my grandmother um, in the summer, and I'd spend, you know, uh, several, this was in Orangeburg, um, and I spent, well, I spent the same 
kind of time with my uh, daddy's uh, uh, parents. But uh, I could walk from my grandmother's uh, to uh, probably at least 10 or 15 blocks to downtown. You know, with maybe another child, we'd go to a movie mm -hmm. or something like that. <laughs> of course, we, I can remember when uh, the tickets went up to 50 cents and I thought that was outrageous. <laughs> um, but uh, it was just a time where, you know, you, you didn't have all the, uh, the crime and, mm -hmm. um, that you have now and, you know, children were safe to, uh, to play like that. And even um, uh, when I lived in, uh, I mentioned that I had moved back to Charleston uh, after um, my uh, first year in college. And I took a, an art class with um, William Halsey, who was one of the best artists uh, well, in, in this time uh, uh, in Charleston. He, um, he had a night class that was, I lived on uh, Colonial Lake, which was one side of Charleston Peninsula. And my class was on the other side there's a Dock Street Theater. I don't know if you know anything about Charleston, but anyway, it was a long way, and I could take a class at night and walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how many blocks, but uh, at least a, a distance of a couple of miles. Yeah, and it was safe. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was. Yeah. Okay, um, what would you say are the greatest challenges that you have faced in your life? Well, one problem is getting a college education. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because uh, when Daddy uh, died, uh, he had a coronary occlusion when I was uh, what, 17. Mm -hmm. and I was 18 that uh, May. He died in December. We were really left with uh, virtually no income. Mm -hmm. Mother went because he had sunk everything into this new drugstore he was going to stop. Um, so uh, I went to college that one year, but the reason why I didn't continue is because we just, and we moved back to live with my grandmother, um, and I just uh, felt like, um, uh, well, went, to, like I said, to work as a, a clerk, and uh, but I really, uh, you know, <laughs> my aim <laughs> had been, before Daddy died, you know, to, to go to college, and mm -hmm. remember one time I was going to go to Winthrop. <laughs> Oh, another time I was said I was gonna, I wanted to be a, a have a garret in Paris and paint. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that was uh, uh, the challenging uh, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what are your memories of events such as segregation, the civil rights movement, wars? Well, of course, wars. Um, you know. Uh, I can remember um, uh, the Second World War, and uh, we'd have air raids, uh, or air raid practice drills mm -hmm. at school, and we'd all, uh, you know, get up and run outside, and, uh, lie down on the ground with a <laughs> hand, you know, face down to the ground, and then, uh, like I said, the, the blackouts. Um, uh, but um, and then when I my grandmama, my papa, my daddy's daddy, and um, grandmother, she was my, my, my grandmother for whom I'm named, was, uh, died in 1925. So my granddaddy had married again, and uh, her name was Beulah. Uh, we would go out to, um, what these, uh, what do you call them, dab lines or something like that. Anyway, watch for enemy um, planes. I guess she mm -hmm. learned how to recognize, mm -hmm. you know, Planes and we we do that um, and so you and then cross rationing and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, have you experienced or observed prejudice or racism in your life? Well, yeah. I've, I guess I've observed a lot. In fact, Orangeburg was a um, they had a uh, I think it was a massacre. I'm not sure. Anyway, it was it was. They, um, there was a lot of prejudices there, and I can remember uh, we were uh, 
I was born and raised Episcopalian, in spite of being a Presbyterian minister. We, um, uh, it was Episcopal, uh, a black Episcopal church in Orangeburg. And I can remember, um, he's a, the, the rector was ill or something, and um, some came to our church, which was all white at that time, and a lot of people, you know, uh, got up and left. Mm -hmm. I mean, we stayed and had, you know, communion. Uh, so, and there was a lot of, you know, feeling uh, about what was uh, going on. Of course, uh, we had we had maids, and I always felt like we were, had good relations with them, mm -hmm. um, and that was maybe a, a southern kind of thing, you know. As I look back at my ancestors, um, you know, they had a lot of slaves, mm -hmm. um, which, um, you know, I don't think was the right thing for uh, any of us to do, but uh, that was, you know, the way it was. Uh, when I um, was at, uh, at Georgia Baptist Hospital, um, they put me in a nurse's dormitory with, um, uh, and I had my roommate was, um, <laughs> it was interesting, I was, uh, she was a nun, I was trying to think of her order, but I was a, uh, uh, I was in a chaplaincy program and they thought that was a good combination. But our sweet mates were black. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we used the same bathrooms and all that kind of thing. And, you know, I didn't have, I had, you know, good feelings about that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no problem. I thought about, you know, at the time how my family might have uh, felt. But, yeah. um, you know, times were changing and <laughs> that was part of it. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, last question. What has provided you with the most satisfaction in life? What are you most proud of? Well, I guess um, I would have said one time um, the murals that I did at the hospital in, um, uh, in Charlotte. But um, the most, uh, I guess, proud and just uh, enriching and, and wonderful experiences were those. Uh, Yes, that my husband and I went to um, Africa. Mm -hmm. um, he, we went um, uh, first time in uh, 1988 uh, to um, to Zaire and uh, to the Good Shepherd Hospital there, and um, he went as a pathologist that they needed at the time and. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, um, but I had um, worship services with the missionaries who themselves were not, you know, ministers uh, as such, and um, uh, worked in, in many ways, you know, uh, in, in that in, uh, that community. Um, and uh, how many times did you go to Africa? Uh, seven. Seven times. We went to, um, <coughs> after our first uh, time in um, Zael, uh, we went back, um, i trying to think, I've always said seven times, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we, uh, we went back, because uh, I, I, I did, and I did murals in the hospital there. Um, the first time, as, as well as, the next time we went back in uh, 90. Every two years, the, um, the staff at the hospital, they were going continuing education mm -hmm. to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and uh, a whole contingent of American doctors would come over to take their place. And so that's how it really happened to uh, be called to do that. And um, so the second time I went, um, the first time, I did uh, murals and pediatrics, and the second time uh, in um, maternity wing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you know, and that was a challenging experience because it was uh, I didn't really have paint with me the first time, and I just got it from every <laughs> source imaginable. Yeah. Uh, then um, uh, 
So we, uh, then we, the third time we went back, we thought we were going to uh, stay for uh, a year at least, but we both uh, got sick. I had, uh, 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 I'm trying to think what they call it, a jaudy or something like that, and mm -hmm. uh, Ray too. So we, uh, we, were, we stayed for about four and a half months. Uh, and everything was getting very volatile in uh, Jai at that time. So the next time uh, we went to Africa was with um, World Medical Mission. And uh, Ray had pathology friends all over the country and there was a guy in uh, San Diego who'd uh, been up there and he um, encouraged us to uh, make contact with World Medical Mission in Boone Coast, North Carolina. And, uh, so th those were uh, wonderful experiences in, uh, in Kenya. Um, well, you, you have certainly had a rich experience in life. Yeah. And thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate it. <laughs>